playing now, so we should do Vegas and Doko 2020. Vegas Strong and Doko 2020. Yeah, Doko 2020 Red. DOCO. Are we live? Yeah, you're good. <laughs> you're on. All right, cool. We're back here live from the uh, Western Prime, Adrenaline Western Prime. Um, J.R. Gruber here with uh, Zach Greer just joined us uh, for the 2020 championship game. Um, we got Doko 2020 versus Vegas Strong 2020. Um, two strong clubs came, coming out, came out here and battled out the, uh, the last couple days. How you doing here, Zach? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It's uh, yeah, exciting to be here. A world class facility, and uh, you know, caught the caught the end of that last game. Some talent out here on the field. Oh, absolutely. It's like good shot by number 38 on Doko. Ben Takata. So 2020. How how old does that put these kids? They'll they'll be the rising juniors. So they'll be okay. they'll be junior in their junior year next year. Got it. So we got a lot of strong players out here, and I I know uh. I know the, the coaches of, of uh, Vegas Strong very well, and I've been, had the pleasure of watching them at a lot of tournaments. Ooh, that's a great good take. take right there. Good take by number four. Number four, ooh, Josh Yago. Nice hard lefty take. I love seeing that. And changing levels, get a, getting a ba little bouncer in there. You don't see that too often. A lot of kids are looking for the glory shots. Exactly. Top shelfers, and he's going for the effectiveness here. That's good stuff right there. Doko starts off with the the lead but a lot of these Vegas guys we have it's a lot of these kids on this team actually play up with their 2019 team so we have a lot of strong players here um, one player in particular I know um, uh, John Don um, I don't know I'm, I'm gonna look out there and see what number he is but let's see I'm gonna look at my roster here real quick oh Where does this fall in their uh, their kind of summer circuit? Um, this kind of middle mid season right now. This is or? about mid season. So um, so I know Doko's coming to um, our event in and uh, the Western Shootout. I know they have a couple other in between there, um, but the the Western Shootout's kind of their their hometown court um, in yep. Colorado because they're they're a Colorado team and yep. Vegas obviously from Nevada. Um, I think everyone knows where Las Vegas is. So. Um, yeah, so um, I think they're just in the middle. So um, a lot of these teams out here um, came out here and, and, and put to the test half the games since we only have one field, field facility inside. Um, we got John Don right here, number 19, taking a, a strong dodge. This is probably Vegas' strongest player, getting the double with long poles and just dicing through it. Uh, attackman couldn't handle the ball, though. Pretty good look there for sure. Yeah, He's, absolutely. Uh, You're going to see a lot from number 19, John Don. He, uh, kid, I've been watching him all week, and the kid's been, kid's been killing it. His, his shots have been on point. Um, his, I mean, his vision's awesome. Athleticism is, is 100% there. Um, um, yeah, so he's, he's very good. <laughs> he's he a very good yet? player. Do we know? What was that? Is he committed yet? Do we know? I don't know. Um, I, I, I wish I did. I, I, I haven't. I talked to their coaches a little bit about him last night, and uh, didn't really get to that point. But I, I believe he's getting a lot of looks. Um, 
I know he was at our America's Finest event playing with the 2019 team, and uh, he was actually the star player in the, oh, wow. in the championship game there. Um, and they, they lost a close game by one goal to, to RC Elite, and that was huge because RC's made up of a lot of uh, Torrey Pines players, which is generally considered the best team in the West. Yeah. So um, a one-goal game to that with them is, is a huge accomplishment. Yeah, no doubt. What's great to Ooh. see out here, you know, is that – these teams are playing a little bit more systems, playing together. I think the knock on kind of the, you know, the club game uh, a few years back was that it was really individual. But now the, the coaching obviously come a long way and, and guys putting in systems and, and kids understanding the importance of working together and playing with the teammates out here, you know, makes everybody look better versus, you know, one or two guys trying to do it themselves. So oh. uh, great to see that out here today. Absolutely. And, and a I know a lot of the Doco players do play together during the season. Um, you see some similar Humboldts out there. I know, I know Vegas Strong um, is actually um, is a combination of two teams that, that generally uh, play tournament circuits separately. So it's, um, ooh, nice little turn the corner right-handed top right rip. And number 19 over here, that's Declan Atwell. That's a great take. You really can't do do a better job defending that, but he uh, got his hands free and, and let it go just in time there. That's a great shot. He really kind of knew where he was on the field when he took that shot, obviously. He wasn't really looking at the goal too much before he took it. Yeah, not much the goalie can do on that one, not much the defender can do there. That's just a great take. That's one thing I'm, I see a lot of. You see a lot of when you have great offensive players, it's – it's very hard to defend them sometimes because there's really nothing you can do against someone who just who has athleticism and and kind of dexterity with a stick like that. Yeah. Nice little face-off win, little scrum face-off win for Vegas Strong. Let's see if they can get a good possession here. They're going to need to to make something happen, not necessarily too quickly, but they want to get on the board quick. So, yeah, Don John with the ball again. Set, holding off, setting up the defense, or setting up the offense. But like I was saying, Vegas Strong's made up of two clubs, so Vegas Stars and moving up, um, elite coach by Gary Campo, and oh, oh man, a rip from outside. That's Number deep. 21. He's got a, that's right around the MLL two point arc there. Oh yeah, R.J. Edwards there with the outside rip. It's another shot that's uh, tough to defend there. Defenders all over him. He dropped the shoulder there, got himself just enough space to get it off and ripped that corner. So Vegas getting on the board about eight minutes into the first half. Another face off ensuing right here. Let's see what they can do. Ooh, Doko's, Doko looks to be getting the draw in their favor, but Vegas is hustling to get those balls. Vegas possession looked like a push call on Doko, little Vegas possession here. Got Eric Kil Kilbrew with the ball. It's an awesome last name. Great check too. Some of these poles, the hands on these kids nowadays too is, is pretty remarkable. Absolutely. Remember growing up playing in high school, uh, be it that was in Canada where the poles weren't used to uh, handling the ball much, but uh, it's a very different game with, with the kids these days and the stick skills they have with the long pole. Oh yeah. And that makes a difference in some games. I mean, do you see it right there? It's a errant, pa not kind of a low pass, and other pole couldn't pick it up, and Vegas gets ball back real quick. Yeah, and a great ride by the attackman there, not giving up on the play. Ninety-seven, Luke Longley working with the with the ball. How did our uh, local Dallas teams fare so far this weekend? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, I know that the, some of the Chaos younger teams didn't do so well, but uh, the, uh, the, 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 I mean, the older teams, I'm sorry. Um, the 2021 team just, just lost a real close one in overtime, which is a bummer for them. But, I mean, it was a, it was a local battle, so you know that one was going to be close and hard fought, and you got players that know each other. I mean, it's one of those things yeah. where you, you get kids on the field that play against each other year-round. Um, it's it's you know it's going to be a battle because the coaches can kind of game plan against gets them a little better than they can against teams like this where one team's from Nevada one team's oh a little miss pass there but um, calling a push call against Vegas um, but yeah they they uh, 
they fought it out to the very end and and um, chaos chaos came came in hot with last goal with I think it was the last seven seconds of the game and then oh, wow. scored the scored the game winner with it probably first 20 seconds of the of the overtime so it's pretty cool to see that um, they were up most of the game iron horse came back hit Four, four or five pipes, which is unfortunate for them, but um, I mean, you got to hit the net to get the G. Yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been out to a few high school games in the area, and the, the quality of lacrosse, I've been living here for about nine months now. The quality of the game here is is probably a lot higher than I, I may have expected going in. There's some really good players and um, good coaches building some quality Ooh. programs here. So Nice finish. Doko's, Doko's doing it well with these bouncers here. Really throwing up. It looks like that was Ben Takata again. Second bouncer of the game for him. I th think that's his shot there, Zach. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Fooled the goalie a little bit. He dropped to the ground. The ball bounces back up top. It's a great shot. Great hard take again. That's twice now he's gone hard to the net, and uh, Vegas Strong might need to start sliding the guy to him if he's going to keep beating his man like that. A face off here. we got number seven. Benjamin, Benjamin Williamson, trying to see who that is for Vegas. Can't really read the numbers. Oh, another bouncer right, Doko. Backed up the shot real nice. They get another chance at a possession here. Spin it around real quick. Probably see one more pass in the dodge right here. Vegas doing real nice to pick up that pick. Covered real nicely. It's a great oh, cut. Great cut. Great feed too. Oh, good quick stick too, but. Goalie was there to cover. It's a pretty good set of offense there. Moved the ball pretty well. Took some time off the clock and found the guy inside. Just a great save by the goalie. Pretty nice facility for these kids to be uh, be playing in at this age. Uh, certainly not the type of fields I'm used to playing on growing up. So. <laughs> Climate controlled, staying out of the heat. It's, oh, absolutely. Uh, and these kids did. They, we got they got the benefit of playing. I think it was two games inside, two games outside. And okay. I know the boys yesterday got got real lucky. There was real nice weather in the morning. Ooh, nice rip. Yeah, um, that's right. It was a little bit. It was cool very yesterday. nice yesterday morning. So the, and we got out of there by. 10 o'clock, I think, straight when the sun popped out. So, That's great. Um, girls weren't as lucky. They, they, they got a little bit of the heat in the afternoon, but um, we switched it up. We did boys, boys uh, in the morning one day, girls in the morning one day, and then we skipped outside games from 11 to, to 5 because no one wants to do that. Yeah, <laughs> smart move. The minute that sun pops out from those clouds, it heats up about 15 degrees, it seems like. scrum there. Nice turnover by Vegas. Glad the referees are kind of letting these boys play because I know Vegas is a little bit of a ooh. Doko wants the ward call there but these yes. refs are letting these boys play and it's I know physical it's getting here, very physical. Let's see how the how the refs react to this but hopefully they let these boys play because yeah, it looks, it looks pretty be, clean. Seems to be a clean physical game right now. Boys are riding hard too, which you gotta love to see. So, unless something egregious happens, I like uh, like letting them play for sure. Oh, absolutely. When you said you're from Canada, so uh, we we know how you guys like to play. Yeah, we like a physical game. Too. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just playing that box lacrosse up there. It's it's one of those things. You 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 got it. You gotta play like that. That's right. And that's huge. That's one thing that I'm actually seeing in the West now is. Um, I think it's across the uh, the country, but the West Coast is kind of my area expertise, and um, 
the box game is, is getting huge on the West Coast. Um, and uh, us being in uh, down in San Diego, we, we actually have the San Diego Seals, the NLL team, coming to town That's right. um, in November. So we're all pretty excited about that to see some uh, add to our the San Diego Goals Stadium uh, where the uh, where the Ducks AHL team play. Yep. My, uh, my brother is going to be the assistant coach of that team. Awesome. So I'll, awesome. Uh, I'm going to have to get out there, catch a game or two. Absolutely, man. It's in a great area, too. It's right, right, o right over by, uh, by the beach, five minutes from downtown. But uh, it's cool, too, because you have box, box leagues coming up pretty much, pretty much everywhere. And I know in San Diego, um, I know Orange County's got a lot. I know L.A. has some. Um, I'm based in Southern California, so that's, ooh, nice take. Um, that's mo most, mostly what I can speak on, but. Yeah, no. You, and you see the influence a lot, too. You see a lot of, a lot of guys kind of backing in, doing inside rolls. Um, you saw a lot in the last game. Um, I think it was Iron Horse that was doing that a lot. They were, they were backing guys down and just getting inside rolls and popping the sh sh uh, shot off their shoulder real, real quickly. Yeah, we've seen a few pick and rolls already in this game, too. I think uh, that's one thing, you know, the, the American, uh, you know, style field game has obviously learned a lot from the box game. And as you said, there's more and more of that being played all over the country. And I think the Canadians are, are doing the same thing in the opposite direction are starting to learn how to play the field game a little bit better. Um, you know, you're seeing guys who can run by some guys and dodge and shoot on the run. And, um, you know, it's, it's making a lot more competitive from both sides. So it's, uh, it's fun to watch. going to be a, a pretty exciting uh, tournament in Israel coming up here. And, uh, oh, yeah, next month, you know, right? Good to see the Canadian, Canadian team got, got uh, everything sorted out and they're going to be there to, to kind of defend the title. So Awesome. Yeah, that's uh, definitely excited for that. We, uh, I got to see uh, Japan's jerseys um, got, got made um, in our warehouse, so it was pretty cool seeing that. Oh, what a shot. That's a deep two-pointer. Luke Longley here with Vegas Strong. That's both their goal. Both of their goals have been outside rifts. They're playing the MLL here. They got the double. They got the uh, the lead here. He was two yards outside that uh, that faded MLL oh, two it. point line there. Yeah, that's, that's pretty impressive shot. High school guy, man. That's a big boy too. He uh, put it, put his weight behind that thing. That's for sure. Oh yeah, Luke Longley at Palo Verde High School in Las Vegas. What I was saying about Vegas before, it's the combo between two high, two different high schools with uh, Jason Griggs coaching Moving Ups club team and K Gary Campo coaching uh, uh, Vegas Stars. Um, and it's pretty cool because I know those two guys are really close. They compete against each other year-round, and for events like this, they'll come together, bring a team together. And um, I know they're having a great time out here. I know I know Coach Griggs is a huge Cowboys fan, so he uh, he lo he's awesome. loving it here. <laughs> he's yeah, loving it yeah. here. Yeah, the Jones family's done a pretty, uh, pretty incredible job in this place, and not Absolutely. just the uh, the stadium, obviously that you guys can see um, on the live stream, but uh, there's a full entertainment district outside, a ton of restaurants and shops, condos going up. It's it's like a little city of its own around here. It's, oh yeah, uh, it's pretty impressive. And yeah, we were out here last year. None of this was built. The hotel wasn't even built, so yeah. um, it was pretty cool coming coming in. Um, this is my first year with the event. Um, I, I'm I new new with adrenaline, so. Um, it's uh, it's pretty cool, kind of walking up and seeing the concourse and all the stuff. Um, I'm, I myself, I'm a Giants fan, so I would love to see a lot more, <laughs> some more New York Giants stuff around here. But I don't think Jerry would like that too much. No, absolutely not. Yeah, one of the unique things about this facility is they uh, created a partnership with the the school district here, so all the high schools oh, in nice the safe. area play their Friday night football games here. Uh, they get some lacrosse games in the building. They do their graduation here. So yeah. uh, for a high school kid to be able to, to kind of call this your home is uh, is pretty unique, that's for sure. Yeah, it's kind of funny because um, watching at the at the info booth that I've been at pretty much the whole weekend, there's there's been kids coming through and kids from San Diego, kids from Vegas, kids from all over the all over other areas are, are stopping and waiting, kind of tiptoeing through and didn't know if they can come by. The Chaos and Iron Horse guys and all the Texas guys are just walking through like they own the place. <laughs> and it's kind of hilarious because they know exactly where they're going. Um, so it's it's pretty cool because, um, I mean, I would have loved to have something like this to, at my, my, uh, on my hands. I mean, when I was in high school, um, we were the first lacrosse team to have a turf home field oh, um, wow. in the, back in 2006. So um, that was pretty cool. We actually we had the benefit of I think we played two two away games that year because no one wanted to play at their field. They wanted to play at our field. So um, since then they built a lot more. But yeah. <laughs> it's it's uh that's awesome. It's pretty cool. It was a pretty cool thing. 
It's a first year program, first year high school program to have the only turf field was pretty special. It's a great job of the defense there. Slid two, recovered well, and kind of shut down any options backside. Oh, almost got him top side there, but it was a nice slide. Nice little help, help down from the midfield. Yeah, and that goes back to you know, the, the coaches obviously putting in putting in defensive systems, uh, and then the athletes yeah. communicating on the field is so important in these club tournaments. The ability to you know talk to guys and, and learn tendencies from guys that maybe you're not necessarily used to playing with, and they uh, they did a good job there. Absolutely. We're just finishing up first half here. We got Doko up 3-2 over Vegas Strong. Not a high scoring half, but uh, a lot of excitement there. A couple big goals, some big hits. The uh, quality of play is pretty high here. Yeah, Fun absolutely. To watch. I think we're going to take a little break here, so we'll be back with you guys in the second half. What do you desire? What makes you itch? What sort of a situation would you like? So I always ask the question, what would you like to do if money were no object? What would, how would you really enjoy spending your life? Well, it's so amazing as a result of our kind of educational system, crowds of students say, well, We'd like to be painters, we'd like to be poets, we'd like to be writers, but as everybody knows, you can't earn any money that way. Another person says, well, I'd like to live an out-of-doors life and ride horses. I say, do you want to teach in a riding school? Uh, let's go through with it. What do you want to do? When we finally got down to something which the individual says he really wants to do, I will say to him, you do that. And uh, forget the money. Uh, because if you say that getting the money is the most important thing, you will spend your life completely wasting your time. You'll be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living, that is to go on doing things you don't like doing, which is stupid. We're back with the second half. Starting off with a quick little face off here. Little scrum. Doko got the possession here. Ooh, big hit. Big hit over here by number 13 on Vegas Strong. Like I was saying earlier, this is a not necessarily chippy team, but they like to throw their body, their bodies around, you know? Yeah, um, both, both these teams have been riding hard. That's something I love to see. You know, a for, former attack man uh, kind of took pride in the ride game and try and turn it into easy turnovers. But uh, both these teams are working hard and um, good to see in, in summer ball. You know, guys aren't giving up. Well, and I, I think I remember this correctly. I think you had a pretty good hard ride to, uh, to tie a game up or, or to win a game for, for your, your college club back in the day. Yeah, maybe a time or two. <laughs> yes, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, that was something we. Uh, you know, we, we took pride in certainly the group I was with was pretty athletic and uh, they let us get after it a little bit. That's, that's, that's I, I also played attack. Right Ooh, there. nice, save, great save. One on one right there, right on the doorstep. Um, and I, I'm going to attack myself, and that was my favorite thing about the game because I was a former face off midfielder. So um, kind of getting down and dirty on the, on the attack side uh, on the rides was one of my favorite things. Because it's kind of the. Ooh, nice, a great kick save. Oh, 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 and he makes the save. Man, that, was, that would have been A couple been great stops. Goalie taking away the angle there, stepping out and uh, not giving him much to look at. Didn't get a stick on it, but the body was in the right place at the right time there. Looks like Matt Topham there made just two great saves in a row and then almost lost it, made it technically a third save there. So that was huge right there. That could have been a little bit of a difference maker there for Doko if the GOAT go up two goals in the beginning of the second. You got to tip your cap to these goalies who are willing to get their body in front of the ball. Certainly oh, yeah. not something that I'd be doing. And, no. uh, 
you know, he wasn't shy there to come out and take away the angle and let it hit him. Yeah, no way. That was my least favorite thing as a lacrosse player, getting hit with the ball. <laughs> I actually played played a little goalie myself um, back in the day. But when I, I was just telling you, went out to Australia. They needed a goalie a couple of games, so I hopped in the cage and. <laughs> Not gonna catch me doing that. Yeah, it wasn't. Sure. I I think I had about 18 goals against per game, but I had I had two or three goals myself. So. <laughs> oh oh, great, great save! Team. These keepers are standing on their heads right now. Good find awesome. there, skip lane through the zone. New and Doko might come up with it. We'll see how this goes. Oh. Could have pulled off a hidden ball check there almost. Doko getting it down on their offense, looking to settle it down. Get some subs for midfield. Yeah, you give uh, give Doko credit for taking their time, being patient with the ball, taking advantage, uh, you know, making sure they're taking good shots, don't seem to be forcing it too much. Oh, yard sale there. Great check with a short stick. D midi there. Couldn't come up with the Lucy, though. Number three, Weston Sullivan working around behind the ball. Gets it off to his wing attackman. Vegas is playing pretty solid defense here. Matching feet real well. Oh, but... Got lucky the he second time on lucky the trail on that. check. Yeah. Luke Longley had a couple. Ooh. Got caught on the slide there. Hopefully he's all right. Fortunately, we got a little injury down on the field. So hoping he's okay. See the trainer out on the field. Yeah, you never like to see that. He took oh. a pretty, pretty good hit there. Absolutely not. Not sure where the slide caught him, but uh, looks like he's holding his arm a little bit. You can't right really there. see it from his ang from this angle, but looks like the trainer's coming out to the field right now to do our evaluation. How far off do you think we are from putting a shot clock in at the? Uh, well, the, certainly the college level is probably going to be first, but uh, you think it ever comes down to the high school level? I th I think it does. Um, I do have a I do have a bunch of games that um, that. Um, I've seen in the high school level where you see teams just running out the clock and and killing it. And when you had at that high school level, you you don't really have the same strong bodies you do have on defense with with professional and and even call some college guys. So it's a lot harder for them to pressure out and, and play because if you have a a strong a, a small shifty attackman that just can outrun you, I mean, you, and someone that can't overpower or even a big a, a big attackman, they're not going to take the ball away from any of those big boys out there if if you don't have to. Uh, a defenseman that can handle. Yeah, and I feel like you still see some teams who might not have the depth or, you know, maybe they got a really good goalie and they kind of sit back in a zone. And, um, you know, I, I feel like it kind of defeats the purpose. It's, it's you know, teams focusing on winning games and yes. not necessarily developing players. And obviously it needs to be a balance between the two. But, um, you know, I, I think there, there needs to be a, a mix of, uh, athletes developing, learning how to play, and, and not just kind of facing a zone, or even defensively, maybe more importantly, sitting in a zone all day. You're not necessarily, um, you know, communicating slides and, and learning systems that you're going to need at the next level. Exactly. Yeah. And and on on a, on a whole, as a as a sport, it, it doesn't really help the sport either because you have someone watching a game that doesn't doesn't play lacrosse, doesn't know what's going on. Um, it's it's not not the best to watch. I mean, you have. In football, pretty much a lot of people can pick up watching football, basketball, those kinds of games because they've watched them their whole lives. Lacrosse is kind of new to a lot of people, and that's kind of—I feel like that's kind of the goal on the on the, like MLL, NLL, um, and then like global global scale. Like they want they want people that aren't playing lacrosse to watch it as well, not just lacrosse players. Um, I, I think it's getting to that point because you hear a lot, you talk to a lot of people and you hear. Um, you hear them talking about, oh, I, I know about lacrosse. Like, I watched this game on TV the other day, and I get excited when I hear that because it's like, oh, well, like, you've never seen the game before, and you just watched the whole game. They're like, yeah, it's awesome. So Yeah, exactly. The Good ability to, to, you know, produce content and distribute content now uh, a little bit more efficiently, you know, talk about a broadcast like today, um, 
you know, is good for everybody. It's good for the growth of the game and, and hopefully allowing more people in the country access to, to seeing quality lacrosse and especially in those, you know, non-traditional markets where, you know, they don't necessarily know what good lacrosse is. It helps, uh, helps expand the sport for oh, sure. Yeah. I couldn't tell you how many times I hear dad say, oh, I saw, uh, I saw kids playing lacrosse. I want to get my son involved. And they have an eight-year-old kid. And, I mean, that's, you, you hear that, that's awesome. I mean, the younger you start them, the better they're going to be, you know. Exactly. Ooh. It's a pretty good look there. A nice cut inside. Great look. Just couldn't handle the ball. Unfortunately for him. Oh. Staying, staying black over here. A little mishandled ball there by... Uh, by Doko, gives the ball to Vegas right back. Thought about it there. I'd like to see him move the ball right there a little quicker. You got a, got three guys sliding to you. Math adds up. Someone, someone's got to be open. Good hard dodge. No help. He probably should have kept running there. Had a step on the defender there for a second, I thought. Vegas Strong picks it back up, though. Well, downhill dodge, you got a slide. Ooh, night. Oh. Oh. Ooh. I would have loved to see him split that triple team. Yeah, got himself in a little bit of trouble there. Again, good, good hard work in the ride, though, to Keep get the ball it. back for these guys. We got, they got Luke Longley posted up on that. Uh, uh, top top right with that rip. See if you can get another downtown shot. You see down there, so you see Coach Campo down there telling them to spread out their offense. The key to the short stick invert is the guys upfield got to be moving their feet. Absolutely. Kind of standing still there a little bit. The double came and he didn't have an outlet to move the ball to. That is one thing I harp on my players is if you're standing in one spot for more than three seconds, you're doing something wrong on the field. Even if you're moving an inch, just keep your feet moving. Keep keep the ball keep the ball moving. Keep your feet moving. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough. I, I feel like, you know, when when you do the invert, players get a tendency to stand and kind of watch. You expect them to beat the short stick, but that's when you get in trouble when the slide goes and there's not help. That's good off ball movement. Oh, there. A little change up bouncer there. Doka really loved these bouncers. I mean, I, I think that was three of their four goals. Yeah. Top shelf bouncers, and they're really catching these goalies off guard. It's a good point. I mean, a couple times he's uh, he's made some saves. They've been shots either kind of hip high or high, and he's hit the body. Um, but uh, the bounce shots, he's been giving him trouble a little bit. Yeah. I get it. That was a little little change up there, too, it looked like. Yeah. It looked like off speed when it, once it hit the ground. Yeah, he's been playing well. That one just fooled him a little bit. Let's see what Vegas could do with this face off. We're... we're just hitting 12 minutes in the game, so we'll see if they can uh, get a couple quick ones in um, to, to kind of tie it up and work towards the end of the game. Yeah, that was a, a good example of that off-ball movement off. we're talking about. Good hard cut to the ball, lefty, and uh, got it off before the defender could get there. Don't quite you see have them doubling the ball at the X there. right there. They got to push that. They got two yeah. guys out of position. They got to move this ball. Oh. We would have liked to see them move it one or two times that, to get, hit that opposite right yeah, side. You had, had two guys at X. On the back side there. That's one thing Vegas, Vegas Strong, I, 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 I've been watching them all weekend, and I, I've seen that they need to do a little better. Is, um, you see a lot of defenders. Um, ooh, nice finish. That's a great take there. Little old school lefty lefty face dodge there. Oh yeah, love seeing that. Wonder if they're doing any box lacrosse out in out in Vegas. It looked like it. <laughs> All right, so Vegas is doing what they need to do right now, keeping the goal game within one. I think they'd like to see it see it tied up right here with Doko kind of sitting pretty right now with the with the lead, but. I think we all know how lacrosse goes. It's a game of runs. Just noticing the referee uniform out there. I respect that look. Yeah, yeah. They, I, I talked to some of the referees yesterday, and they actually were getting them in the parking lot before they came to the fields, uh, the B.F. Phillip fields. Um, and I was, I was. 
kind of joking with them, hooting at them. I was like, you guys look fresh. <laughs> um, and they love it. I mean, this, this is a big event. This is a big event for them. It's pretty much a big event for everyone involved. Um, oh, oh, man. Pipe. These Vegas kids with the... the I was outside the arc too. They're not scared to pull them out there. That's would have liked to. See, I actually would have liked to see that one go in. This, but I mean, just knowing that they have that that ability is is a little scary for Doko. Yeah, it separates the defense oh, a little bit. Good save, great save. Keeper here is playing pretty well for Doko. Doko's got to take care of the ball on the ride here. They've had a few turnovers <laughs> today that have uh, haven't cost them yet, but might. Nice. Oh, right there. There it is. The clearing game, you mentioned it early, just just crucial, uh, particularly when there is no shot clock, right? Uh, Absolutely. You don't have the, the ability to get the ball out and start playing defense two, three, four minutes in a row. It's going to wear down your guys. And I think Doko's going to be doing that. They're going to be taking care of their possessions probably for the rest of the game. Yeah, I'd say they, they've probably done a better job of that so far this game. They usually, you know, spin it once or twice every possession before they go to the net, make sure they got their personnel on and have done a pretty good job finding the matchups that they want to go at. Smart decision there, pulling the ball out. Mm -hmm. He's got to recover here. Guy's losing his foot in here. Oh, Ooh. tough pass. Ah, it's tough. You got to zing those in there if you want to get it by those LSMs a lot of the time. Let's see how this goes. It's over and back there for Ondoko. Tough bounce there. I actually really like the, uh, the, the, I mean, it's not necessarily a new rule anymore, but the over and back rule that they instated, I think it was a few years ago for, for the high school level. Um, I do kind of like it. Um, I, I, as an attackman, I'd, always like battling with balls squirting over the, uh, the midfield line, but I think it keeps the flow of the game going. Um, Agreed. Oh, good soak there. He's eating it. Didn't even react either. I didn't no, even know it hit him. <laughs> he just took off after the ground ball. Oh, wow. That's a tough play there. Always oh, feeling it a little bit now. Tough play by the defender. Oh, another rip by Vegas. Good save there. Number one, Clayton Glibera on Doko has made two or three real good saves in the last in the last five minutes. Kind of keeping Doko with their with their lead. Low scoring barn burner here. Same thing as the last game. It, it seems like a lot of these teams, they're, they're doing really well on offense. They just can't seem to find the back of the net as much as they'd like to. But um, I'm enjoying the defensive side of the game, too. It's, as an offensive player, you, you like to see a lot, a lot of goals, but it's always nice seeing... Ooh, looks like he lost handle on that one real, real, real quick. You always like seeing the other half succeed in... But clears clears have been a huge thing for Doko this game. I feel like they would have a couple more, a couple more goals up on Vegas if they would if they would uh, would have cleared some of the had more successful clears. Yeah, they've seen their success on offense going at the short sticks or big little pick and rolls. The last couple times they've gone kind of big big on the pick and roll, and it's tough to um, even if you get a step on them. Typically, the stick's long enough to kind of tighten up. I so. save there. It's a pretty good take there, but I think they want to they want to go back to find the matchups, find the short sticks, and uh, start there, draw a slide, and then find find space behind is what's been the recipe for success earlier. I think the end of this game is going to kind of come down to goalies, actually. Whoever can make the saves. They're, both teams are getting good shots off. It's just keepers are stepping right in front. 
Actually, we got some defenders stepping in front, too. That's right. How many games these kids played this weekend? Uh, I think this would be their fifth game. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so this is their fifth game. They uh, those, those benches aren't overly deep over there. No, They're probably so they, starting to wear down. Maybe that's a little reason the pace has slowed down a little bit here in the second half. Nice. nice. But he's running. Chasing Sisson over here for Vegas. Vegas strong coming down the field real hot, getting it getting on this offensive end for his team, giving him a chance. There's just under five minutes left in the game, so let's see what Vegas can do here. They gotta, they gotta, they don't have to work quickly, but gotta get them back on the board. Oh, Old the fact that that even got inside. through there. Yeah, no doubt. Oh, but they can recover. That's a big loose ball. Move, move it. Got a lot of room there oh, to work nice with. Shake and bake. Oh. One more pass. Oh, what a play. That's great offense right there. Got the defense frozen there with that fake shot. Unselfish play right there. And then you got, got a little hitch by our attackman down low. A shifty feed on him to gain space there. Draw the slide. That was a, a great play by the midi to set that up. Number 21, R.J. Edwards with the assist. Andrew Waldrop with the goal. About three, just over three minutes Clutch left. Clutch face game. off right there. And that's what we were talking about last game. This is exactly what we want to see in a championship game. Um, got a timeout called. I think we got a timeout called by, by Vegas Strong here. Um, so in our championship games, this is the only, the only time in the tournament where tournament teams do get timeouts. Um, we allot a little bit, little bit of extra time for that. Um, otherwise, they don't really get timeouts because they are running time. So we got, do got to keep it going. Get all the games in. So Vegas is looking to set up a, an offense here and see uh, see what they can do. They they got some tough breaks, but they had a real nice play right there, and I think the momentum's kind of shifting. And to me, it looks like it's kind of shifting their direction. Doko's Doko's had a lot of good shots, but um, turnovers have been the problem there for them. Um, but they've had a they have a bunch of successful teams out here. So um, let's see what they can do on defense and see if they can turn it over. Um, and right the, around three minutes on the clock, it'll be interesting to see if they try and. Uh, hold it for last shot. I don't know if they can get away with that or not, but. Uh... So look to see number 19, Don John, working with the ball here. Yeah, it looks like the clock's down to about 2.20 is where they started it, or 2.240. They might, might be able to hold it here for last shot. Nice ball movement there by Vegas. Oh, but an uh -oh. air pass by Donjon. I'm not seeing as much as I, he's, he's been playing good all weekend. Today's not, not seeing much. Used to, used to seeing him hit the back of the net a couple more times, but his pass has been a little off. Oh, oh tough I hate one. to see that. Tough one. Unfortunately, kind of a bad pass, but the attackman wasn't really moving his feet. He had him planted and sneaks right by him. Let's see if they can get it back, back on this ride. Back to the clear game here. Doko needs this one. Oh, nice find. It's a good ball there. A little up and over pass. Vegas pressing out real far there. Yeah, now if I'm Doko, I'm going to hold this for the last shot. Find the short stick matchup, go at it, and make sure there's movement behind the slide. I think Doko. Oh, that oh. might be a forced pass there. Nice. Glad that he just eased off on that. That could have easily been a flag down. He got a little lucky there. Oh, what a good hard take. Delco finishes, goes up 5-4 with just about a minute left. It's running time here. Vegas needs to, I mean, Vegas needs to be hustling back to the face-off X if they want to. I respect, respect the confidence there. 
Didn't need to wait for last shot. Just a good hard dodge top side. No help there and a great shot. Uh, 40 seconds left. We get this face off off quick. It's a big one. This is the big, this is, this is the game right here. Oh, huge for Vegas. Looks like a little fast break opportunity. Oh, handle. 20 seconds left on the clock. Ah, uh, not enough heat on that one to get by, get it by. Clayton Guevara makes the, looks looks like what, what's gonna be the game winning save. Might be speaking too early, but. Yeah, nice oh, job nice there. nice little toe drag there. That was. Holding his ground. Oh, two seconds left, one. Mm. That's gonna do it. Oh, that is it. That is it. That's kind of a, that's a heartbreaker for Vegas. Definitely a heartbreaker for Vegas, but congratulations to Doko. So it looks like we have up next, we got the Doko 2019.